G'day, this is Carl Thompson from StorageCraft in Asia Pacific, and this tutorial is going to cover off deploying the StorageCraft Shadow Control Appliance in Microsoft Azure. So for deploying the Shadow Control Appliance, it comes down to three steps. Firstly, we need to build the Shadow Control Appliance in a local Hyper-V environment. We need to make sure that the VM is a Generation 1. We need it to be a fixed size VHD so that it's supported in Azure. And we need to configure the appropriate network settings. And what I mean by this is that the appliance is built with a static IP or a fixed IP address, so when that comes up in Azure, we'll need to make sure that the networking subnet matches so that we can access the machine. Second step, we need to upload that VHD to Azure. And thirdly, we need to create the Shadow Control VM in Azure, uh, obviously attach that VHD, and then again match up those network settings uh, so that we can access the dashboard. So three easy steps. Um, let's jump in and take a look via a demonstration. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is on the StorageCraft website, we're going to go across to support and software downloads and updates. Now from here, we're going to download, if we scroll near the bottom there, the Shadow Control version 4, we need to download the Shadow Control Appliance Builder. So here's the ISO file here. So once we've got that um, Shadow Control Appliance Builder, we need to jump into Hyper-V and create a virtual machine. So I'm going to go new virtual machine. And I'm going to go through the wizard, so I'm going to call this Shadow Control. Um, and then I'm going to go next. We need it to be a Generation 1 virtual machine so that it's supported by um, Shadow Control. So for the memory, StorageCraft recommends a minimum of 2 gigabytes of memory. Um, obviously, for larger partners, as you start getting to hundreds or thousands of endpoints, you're going to need to increase this. But we can look at that at a later point in time. So I'll just start with 2 gigabytes of memory. Uh, networking, I'll just attach that to my um, networking that I've got locally here and we'll talk a little bit more about the IP address shortly. Um, so again, for the virtual disk, I need it to be a fixed size VHD, so I'm going to attach a virtual disk later and go finish. So this is the basics we need for the VM. If we go in here and edit that now uh, and just make a couple of changes, uh, minimum requirements suggest uh, two core, so we're going to set that to two core. Um, and then for the, the VHD, we can go and create one from here. I'm going to go here and click Add. I'm going to create a new disk and just follow through the wizard. It needs to be a VHD. Uh, it needs to be fixed size, as I've mentioned. Um, and again, we'll just label this Shadow Control VHD. And then the size. So uh, minimum requirements is 80 gig of disk space. Typically, that's going to last you. Um, if you did run out of space, we can always uh, create a new disk um, and copy the config over. But you know, re realistically, 80 gigabytes should be fine for most of our partners at this time. So go ahead here and click finish. Now, um, once it's created the virtual disk and attach it to the VM, we're then going to attach the ISO file and then boot from the ISO, and this will then deploy the Shadow Control Appliance software into this VM. So next thing we'll do is go and attach the ISO file. And that's basically all we need to do. That VM's now ready to go. So I'll apply that. Connect onto the console and we'll start it up. So it's going to ask us a couple of questions as the installer starts. Um, it will also need internet access to go and download um, various bits from the StorageCraft repository. But once we're up and running, um, we'll then go ahead and, and power this off and upload it into Azure. Okay, so first thing it's going to ask for is the IP address for the appliance. So I'm going to give it an IP address um, that's going to have internet access on my network. And I'm also going to bear in mind that I want to use, uh, or I'm going to need a subnet in Azure that will leverage the same subnet. Name server address, um, at this point in time, I'm just going to leverage a Google name server. Um, the gateway can be updated later as well. Um, host name, shadow control, domain name. Um, this is going to be an isolated environment, so I'm not going to worry about that. The setup process takes a couple of minutes. Um, it's, we're just going to fast forward this in the video, but you can see here it's going through and downloading various components um, to build the appliance. Once it's up and running, it'll present us with a login screen so we know that it's ready to go. Uh, there's no way to actually log in to the Shadow Control appliance in the, um, from the command line. It is a locked down appliance by StorageCraft, um, but it is all driven through the web page from a dashboard. So it's really easy to use. 
Uh, once that is on the login screen, we will go ahead and make sure that we can access that page. We can actually then proceed through and start configuring or setting up that appliance. However, at this point in time, it doesn't really affect us uh, proceeding to create this machine in Azure. If you're not using a proxy, you can just um, continue on on this screen. So as you can see at this point, we're now at the appliance login screen. So if we jump across to the web browser and navigate to that IP, we will get across, and there's no certificate installed at this point in time, but that's okay. We can see here we're at the appliance setup screen. So at this point, um, I could go through and set up the appliance. Um, or I could um, restore the appliance from a previous Shadow Control database file, perhaps that I want to bring up into uh, Azure. However, at this point in time, I'm just going to power off the virtual machine. Um, I don't need to set that up at this time. I can finish that later once it's up in Azure. So we're going to power off this machine. And then what we're going to do is jump across into the uh, Microsoft Azure portal. So in this demonstration, I'm going to leverage the um, manage.windowsazure.com portal. I think this might be known as the legacy portal. Um, I just prefer this one personally because I know that I can attach the VHD to the VM without having to um, without having to use PowerShell. So the first thing is I've created a storage account. I'm then going into containers and I'm going to um, I've got a VHD container. So I've created an account and that container already. I'm then going to jump into the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. Now you can use whichever tool you prefer. Um, there's a couple of cool things with this one which I'll point out. But we can see here I've logged in. Um, there's my um, account that I've got set up. And I'm just now going to browse down into blob containers and locate that VHDs container that I have set up. So this is where I'm going to upload the VHD to. Um, now, I just find doing things via the GUI easy, and particularly if, if you haven't done this before, um, it might be easier than trying to learn PowerShell. So there's the um, Shadow Control VHD, um, and you can see there the little cool thing is it's telling me that the VHD should be a page blob, so you need to make sure of that. Um, and basically, I'm now ready to upload. So it's going to take a little while to upload. Um, that's an 80 gig, uh, 80 gigabyte fixed VHD. So what we'll do is while that's uploading, let's go and get the rest of the Azure portal set up ready to go. So back in here, the next thing is to go into networks. And we're going to create a network that this shadow control appliance is going to reside in. So create a virtual network. You need to give it a name. I'm just going to call it shadow control net. going to use uh, Australia East, that's where I want my VM to reside. Now for DNS names, I'm, I'm just going to use um, two public Google DNS servers, these are just ones that I've previously used for a network, so it's remembered them, um, but yeah, that's the key thing, is obviously Shadow Control is going to need internet access and need to be able to resolve. Um, now the final thing is configuring the network address spaces. So this appliance needs to be in the same subnet as what I used when I built the appliance in Hyper-V. So my uh, subnet was uh, starting in 172.16.165.0. Uh, so that's the subnet I used on-prem. I need to match that so that I can access it in Microsoft Azure. I'm gonna use a slash 24 range here. Now I'm just gonna point out in the next screen why this is um, relevant to do it like this, but basically that's what I need to do. I need to match the subnet. Um, when I go complete, it's going to go and create the network, and it takes a minute or so to create. Then we're going to go in, and I'm, what I'm looking for is I'm looking to verify that the IP address that it's going to release to the first machine is matching what I used in Hyper-V. So once this is created, we're going to go in here, go to configure, and you'll see here the local or that usable address range. And I can see there that first IP, 172.16.165.4. That is the IP that I had created in Hyper-V. So I encourage you um, you know, to look at this um, sort of early on in that, in that building phase and making sure that 
you can uh, align the IP address with with what we have in the um, suddenly in the cloud. Now I don't know if this is the best way to do it. I've just figured that this way works quite easily. Um, so that's how I've configured the appliance. Okay, well let's uh, jump back and see how this upload process is going. You can see there it's uh, just on 4%. So I'm just going to fast forward through this a little bit. Sort of found once it got to about 50%, it seemed to speed up. Um, you know, obviously it's a fixed size VHD, so it's, it's you know it's trying to upload the 80 gigabytes. Although there's not a lot of actual data in that VHD file, so I don't know how the sort of timing or the upload process is impacted by that. So we can see there that VHD has now uploaded. So the next step is to jump back into the Azure portal. Um, and we're going to go. Um, we're going to go back up to um, virtual machines, and this time we need to go across to disks. So what we need to do is create a disk. So I'm going to call this Shadow Control, and then we're going to browse to the VHD we just uploaded. So again, I'm going to go into the account and then into that container. And there's the Shadow Control VHD we just uploaded. And I'm going to tick this box that it contains an operating system. And the appliance is based on Linux, so I select that. So very straightforward. Click the tick. OK, so that's been done. Um, we can just acknowledge those. Um, now I'm going to go across to uh, Instances. And we're going to create a new virtual machine. Um, I'm going to click From Gallery. And this will give us the option to select the image uh, disk that we just created. So I'm going to go down here and select my disks. So there is the shadow control um, disk we just created. So I'm going to go next, virtual machine name, again, shadow control. Uh, now, we don't need um, too much grunt here. I'm just going to select a basic disk, uh, 2 gig, um, 3.5 gig of memory. That's going to be more than sufficient. Click next. Um, we need to create a cloud service, so that's fine. I'm going to call that Shadow Control as well. Uh, there's the Shadow Control network we created um, with the appropriate subnet, remember. Um, and then down here, finally, um, the endpoint. So we don't really want SSH open to the internet to this machine, but I do need HTTPS open because that's um, obviously the dashboard. If StorageCraft support needed access to this to help you, uh, they come in through the back end, they will use SSH, but you would just add that at that time if you needed that type of assistance for troubleshooting. Um, I'm going to go next. Uh, I don't need a VM agent installed, and go tick. So it is now provisioning the VM. Um, once this is up and running, I'll go in there um, and it will tell us what the um, static IP is, or we know that it's um, we've actually we've actually got the DNS name here. So this is uh, the DNS name that I'm going to use. Again, fast forward this video a little bit for that to finish provisioning. So we can see there that that appliance is now running. So again, if I just jump into the dashboard. Um, it will also confirm there the DNS name that we're going to connect to. It's also got the public IP address there. So if I go ahead here and um, copy this DNS name, that is what we're going to want to connect to on HTTPS. Now we can see here again the certificate has popped up. I'm going to go advanced and proceed. But what you'll see here is we are back to the shadow control setup stage of the appliance. So again, if I had fully built that appliance on-prem, um, it would be ready to log into the dashboard. Um, but now at least this VHD, I could use it you know, if I wanted to have different customers. Um, but shadow control is multi-tenancy. So typically, our partners would just have the one. Um, but yeah, basically, it's good to go. We can set it up as a new appliance. Or um, if I was using shadow control on-prem or in a data center, um, and I want to shift it into Microsoft Azure, um, we would just leverage this. We can just export the config file from our on-prem um, and then browse and upload that into this appliance and it will build itself um, with all of your existing endpoints and settings um, across into here. The key thing uh, would be that all of your endpoints would need to be updated to point to here. And the simplest way to do that is point the DNS name to this new IP uh, and they'll continue to work. So really, really easy um, to migrate an existing shadow control appliance into Microsoft Azure. So thank you for listening in on this quick tutorial. Hopefully that's been helpful for you on getting up and running with your shadow control appliance into Microsoft Azure.